Andrew, in the video clip we have just seen, uh, Billy and Niall outlined production and efficiency targets. They mentioned the figure of 0.99 of a calf per cow per year a 360 four day calving interval and 85% of the cows calving in six weeks. We just maybe set their standard versus the typical average farm or even the top 25%. Where do they sit or where do farmers sit relative to them? Well, it's, it's certainly, I, I think you can see Eddie from the, the video, they really are achieving ex exceptional performance. And, and if we compare that with the, the sort of the national average figures, they're achieving 0.99 calves per cow per year. That's against the national average of about 0.85 calves per cow per year. They're achieving a, a six week calving rate of 85% compared to 52%. And in terms of calving interval, they're 364 days against 401 days. So there's no doubt about it. They're, it's, it's, it's exceptional performance, but they're doing it through really the uh, early adoption and, and use of, of, of new technologies to really help to drive on performance on the farm. And, and that's not just the breeding technologies. You know, certainly there were early adopters of the whole um, uh, Eurostar replacement indexes. In fact, they were ahead of that in terms of their replacement policy on the farms. There's, there's 12 or 15 years of, you know, use of, of really improved genetics in terms of those maternal traits that have been going on in that farm. And then in addition to that, they're complementing that with not just the breeding technologies, but some of the other technologies that we're talking about here this evening, such as you know, trailing shoe biodiversity, the other aspects that you would have picked up on the farm, use of clover, so really getting exceptional performance on the farm. Okay, so in their, on their farm, they have been using obviously the technologies you outlined, and many of these have been promoted by, by yourselves and ICBF, and obviously Chagas are, are promoting those as well. So really maybe just for people listening, so look, so what are the guidelines and help that, that, help that are available to help farmers move from the national average, you know, to levels where these people are at. I mean, these are impressive targets, uh, obviously highly efficient. So just be briefly talk, talk us through what, are, what is available that will help farmers to, to, to move in the direction they, are, they have gone to. Well, the first thing I would encourage farmers to do is, is engagement in the programs that are out there. And, and there are a lot of really positive programs now. I know the Beef Data and Genomics program copped a, a, a bit of flack in its early years. Some would say it was ahead of its time and arguably it perhaps was, but it has positioned us now into a great place with regard to the, you know, being able to really demonstrate the opportunities that there are around the carbon efficiency gains that can be achieved from the suckler herd. So the BDGP is now coming to the end of that, that program. And of course, it has been complemented in many ways by, by the beef environmental efficiency pilot. Now, that was a pilot last year around uh, weighing cows and calves, and people said that farmers wouldn't do it. You know, the Nicholsons have been doing it for 15 or 20 years. But last year, you know, we got a good uptake in the program. And this year, in terms of that has converted to a new program with the Department of Agriculture. And you know, there's 27,000 beef farms involved in the program now, weighing 700,000 cows and calves that will be weighed in, in 2020. So it really helps to demonstrate. It, they're great examples of, you know, policy meeting practice. So where policy is really supporting the industry in terms of its, its needs and requirements for the future. And that then gives a great basis in terms of data and tools, which organizations such as ICBF, Chagas, Borbia, et cetera, okay. can then help to pick up and, and use whether it's the Eurostar replacement index or the carbon navigators, et cetera, to really help to further improve that animal efficiency, that herd efficiency, and, 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 the, and demonstrating and improving the climate efficiency of our suckler okay, herd. Okay, I'm sure we'll, we'll come back to that again in the moment, but maybe someone looking into the program tonight, maybe who is not a, a farmer, or maybe come from wearing a more environmental hat, they said, what are these guys talking about? There was supposed to be some mention of sustainability here and then tonight. Just link what you've just said to the whole issue of sustainability because it's important. Yeah, and, th and this is where the, the real win-win is. And, and I know both Mark and Mike have talked about that as well. And, and, and certainly in the context of the breeding piece, you know, the gains that farmers want and need in terms of calves per cow per year, in terms of younger age at slaughter, in terms of improved female fertility, uh, in terms of improved growth rate. I mean, that's all completely consistent with, we we'll call it climate and environmental benefits. And whenever we actually look at that in the context of the, the current rates of gain that we're achieving now in the suckler herd as a consequence of the replacement index, and our initial indications we were certainly very, very confident based on the biological models that 
by improving these traits, we were going to actually also reduce the carbon footprint, reduce the total methane output of our suckler herd. And that now has been validated. So, um, and, and some of your viewers, or I'd encourage people to look back at the pieces from this morning where the Tully, at the Tully Performance Test Station, again, Department of Agriculture funded programs with Chagas involved. And we're actually really seeing that these high indexed animals are not only delivering in terms of the productivity gains that farmers need, but they're actually doing it with lower total methane output, which is a fantastic win-win. Uh, and when you start to put that into real figures, yeah. you know, if we look at the sort of gains that are now happening in the suckler herd, you know, and if we project forward to 2030, well, there's a 100 euro additional profit opportunity there for farmers but it's going to come with three, four percent less methane output at a per cow level. Okay. And there's opportunities to push that further. So that seems very exciting that not alone by improving technical efficiency at farm level, that's enhancing sustainability, both the cattle are on the this face of the earth for maybe a shorter period of time when they're there, they're being productive. But also the important point is that through genetic advances, we're also having animals that individually produce less methane. So that's a, that's a real, real win-win. Maybe the last maybe question before we close this particular section is maybe in the broader context, you know, where does the Irish suckler herd sit in the context of overall, overall sustainability, maybe in, in compared to an international context? Well, certainly in an international co context and, and, and looking at the board, we know we're very carbon efficient and that's a very, very good story, you know, in terms of our carbon footprint of our national herd. I think we're fourth in, in, in overall terms. But... The real opportunity is the infrastructure that we have in, in Ireland around, you know, the collection of the data, the programmes that we have in place. I mean, the, the, our beef cattle breeding database is the largest in the world. 15 million animals with the level of genotyping that's happening, you know, with our focus around breed improvement across the range of breeds and using the commercial data. So it gives us a great foothold or a starting point to really drive on that genetic gain opportunity. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic opportunity. And we're also very, very fortunate that we have in many ways a unique eco ecosystem here in Ireland, where again, I come back to the policy meeting practice piece, where we have this great interaction happening between government and between the agencies and with farmers and the industry that gets all of these synergies really working for farmer, for industry and also for consumer benefits and that's where the real plus pluses are Eddie.